Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, in this video, we're going to be creating a table for our database. Uh, if you remember in the last video, we created our sample database and we set up our SQL environment so that we could begin writing commands. Uh, but currently, our database is completely empty. So let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is populate our database with a table. So a table is made up of columns and rows and the columns make up the fields and the structure of our table and uh, those will hold our rows which represent individual records within our table and this will make uh, more sense in a minute. Um, so when we first create our table we will have to also tell the table what columns uh, we want our table to hold and when the table is first created it won't have any rows because uh, rows will only be created once we begin adding records to our table. So that may sound a little confusing, but let's go ahead and create our first table and I think it'll make more sense. Um, so we're going to cre uh, create table and we're going to call this table people. Now you're going to open up some parentheses here and I'm going to go ahead and make this on a new line here. And now within these parentheses, now we're going to create our fields, which will be our columns. So within this table people, I want the fields ID and name. And these fields have to be separated by a comma. Um, now these fields also need a data type. Uh, the table has to know what kind of data each field is going to hold. Now remember, we are using Postgres as our SQL platform. Um, so we can view the different data types. If we get online here and you type in Postgres data types, um, then you can look at the Postgres documentation to view these data types. So it's the very top link here, and I've already got that opened up over here. Now, this is a page that has the documentation of the data types. Now, if we scroll down here, then we can see the different data types that we can use uh, whenever we create a table. Now, I know that this looks like a lot of options, and it is, uh, but don't get overwhelmed because uh, a lot of the time, you'll only be using a select few of these for your table. So in our example, we had the fields ID and name. So we want ID to be an integer. So if I look at the table here, we can see that we have integer right here. It says that it's a signed four byte integer, and it also has a name, integer, and we can also use int or int four. Now the value that I'm gonna use is integer. So if I open up um, my GUI program again here, then I'm gonna put this before the comma, right after the field name, I'm gonna type in integer, and that is the data type that we want ID to be. Now for the name field, I want that to be a variable length character string. And if we look back at the documentation here, um, we can see that we have this character varying, and then the alias is varchar, and the description is exactly what we want, a variable length character string. Now you can see that it also has this n here, and what that n is, is uh, that is a number that we can uh, put in that will be a maximum on the number of characters that can be added to this field. So for example, if I was to put 255 there for that n, uh, then we wouldn't be able to add any records with a name longer than 255 characters. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to our program here. And I'm gonna use uh, varchar here. And in the parentheses, I'm gonna go ahead and put in that 255. So this looks good, we haven't run this yet, but if we look back, we are creating a table called people, and within this table, we're gonna have two fields, which will be our columns. One is gonna be ID, which is an integer. One is gonna be name, which is a variable length character string of 255 characters max. So let's go ahead and run this query. And now if I go over here and refresh my tables, then we can see that we now have this people table. And if I click on the people table, then you can see that we have a column here, ID, and a column here, name. So what if something was wrong with this table and we just wanted to delete the table altogether? Um, now, we in this GUI program, we could just come over here and right click and delete table, but we're learning about SQL commands. So uh, we're gonna do this in SQL. Now, this is super easy to do. That's just gonna be the drop table command. So we're just going to delete this and we're gonna type in drop table and type in the name of our table, which was people. And let's put in a semicolon there. I think I forgot the semicolon before you uh, kinda wanna get in the habit of adding those in. So now if I run this query, 
and then refresh my tables over here, then you can see that the people table was deleted. It got dropped. Um, so you want to be careful with the drop command because it will delete your table and all of the information that that table holds. So now let's go ahead and recreate that table that we just deleted just to kind of get a firm grasp on this. Um, so you may want to type these from scratch a few times just to kind of get the feel for the syntax. If you just copy and paste these commands over and over, then you might not actually learn the commands as well as you think you are. And you won't know how to do it from scratch uh, when you don't have your clipboard, clipboard available to you at a later time. So let's go ahead and uh, rewrite this create table again from scratch. So create table people. We'll put in our parentheses here. And that was an ID with an integer. And we'll put in our comma there. And a name with varchar255. Let's go ahead and run that query. Refresh our tables over here. And we can see that we now have our people table back with ID and name. So there we go, now we have our table back. And in this video, we created our first table. We looked at uh, columns and the different data types that we can use. In the next video, we're gonna actually start putting records into our table. Uh, then we'll be able to kind of see how all of this comes together to create a simple database with all of the parts working together. So be sure to check out that video. If you guys have any questions, just ask in the comment section below. Um, be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you guys for watching.